Have you ever agonized over something in life? Something you really, truly wanted without a shadow of doubt? For me, I was about six or seven years old, and I remember for me it was a Lego set. It was early in my life, and I remember wanting this set more than anything else in the world. I would mention it to my parents from time to time. It even got so bad I started to pray about the Lego set. I remember promising God I'll do anything at all if I can get these Legos. I'll be good. I'll listen to my parents. I'll stay out of trouble. You know the kinds of things. And after all those days and probably months of praying, I never did get the Lego set. And here I am, 45 years old, or almost 45 years old, and I still, from time to time, think about that Lego set. What I had to learn early on in life is that there are things more important to pray for than Legos. Even though for a boy that may seem like one of the greatest priorities in the world, I had to discover that God probably was not going to give me that Lego set, no matter how good I was, and no matter how much negotiating I tried to do. I mention that because of the prayer that we find in Luke chapter 22. It's in the hours following the Passover celebration that Jesus and his disciples went out to the Mount of Olives, specifically to the Garden of Gethsemane. We're told in verse 39 that Jesus went out as was his custom. That seems to have been something he did considerably during that Passion Week, going out, spending the night on the Mount of Olives. But it may also be an indication that he went and he prayed while he spent that time on the Mount of Olives. We know that prayer was an important part of Jesus' life. He taught his disciples early on the format for praying. He spoke of when you pray, not if you pray. And we realize that prayer is truly something that we all have need of. We have it on our good days and we have need of it on our bad days as well. When we look at these words of prayer, we find that Jesus was truly wrestling in the garden. He wasn't wrestling over a set of Legos like a small boy might would. Instead, he was focusing on what was going to unfold in the hours that came very, very shortly thereafter. He knew that he was going to be betrayed. He knew that the disciples would desert him. He knew that Peter was going to deny him. But during that time of prayer, Jesus agonized. He really wrestled with his Heavenly Father. Have you ever agonized over something in prayer? Maybe it was a situation you were dealing with at work. Perhaps it was the loss of a family member. Maybe it was a friendship that was going south. We've all had those times in life where things just don't seem to be fair. Things don't seem to be working out too well. And so we go to the Lord in prayer and we do so consistently. We do so day after day after day. And we really wrestle with those situations. God, give me the strength. God, give me the peace. God, give me the ability to accept. God, give me a willingness to understand. There are so many moments in life where we find ourselves just like Jesus wrestling we're told that once Jesus had gone out to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane, he threw himself down and he began to call out to his Heavenly Father. Now before that, he told his disciples to sit, to watch, and to pray as well so that they might avoid a time of testing. Later on, we're going to find that Jesus went back and he found those disciples asleep. All of the different gospel accounts have unique details, and one that we find here in the Gospel of Luke is the fact that as Jesus prayed, he began to need strength, and we're told that an angel came and ministered to his needs. We're also told that he started to sweat what seemed like drops of blood. Now that may be a case that he was sweating profusely because of the intensity of the moment. It may also be a case of something that's very rare, a medical condition known as hematidrosis. It's where sweat mixes with blood vessels that have broken because of intense stress and anguish. And there's a little bit of a reddish tint to the sweat that one begins to perspire. 
Regardless, we can tell this was a time of intense pressure for Jesus. He was wrestling. He knew this was his hour. This was his moment. This was the moment that he came into the world to fulfill. He knew that things were going to be difficult. They had been challenging throughout his ministry thus far. He knew they were going to be physically painful as well as spiritually and emotionally draining for himself over the hours to come. He knew that it was going to be a very troubling time for his disciples. They would need strength so as to persevere through these dark and difficult days, so as not to fall back into old habits and walk away from discipleship altogether. These moments are very important in the life of Jesus, and they should remind us of the power and the place of prayer in our own lives, and the fact that there is nothing, nothing at all that you and I cannot take into the presence of God in prayer. Sometimes we think that prayer is simply a wish list, telling God what we like, what we need, what we want, but so often we really need to pour our hearts out before God. I can't tell you how many times I've visited with shut-ins and other church members through the years, and they'll become sort of emotional when they're discussing something. They'll even become emotional as they're praying along with me. They'll start to apologize, and I often tell them, there's no need to apologize. There's no need to say that you're sorry for crying, because emotions are a natural part of our life journey. They're natural not in, only in everyday, ordinary matters. They also are matters that are important to things of faith. How many times are our hearts broken when we look at the world situation around us? How many times are our hearts broken when we realize that the church maybe isn't living up to its fullest potential in this day and time? It should hurt us. It should create aches and pains within our hearts and our minds, knowing that this world is not as God intended for it to be. We should also take courage knowing that when we go to the Lord in prayer, God understands our hurts. God understands our hearts. I'm reminded of the words of Paul in Romans chapter 8 where he tells us when we don't know what to pray or how to pray, his spirit intercedes on our behalf. Because let's be honest, sometimes in life there are no words for the situations we're going through. We're overwhelmed by stress, anxiety, fear, and it's in those moments where we need God to hear that which is unspeakable in our heart of hearts. Here Jesus was in anguish as he began to pray to his Father, saying, Lord, if it's at all possible, let this cup pass over me. Jesus wasn't attempting to get out of anything. He was not scared. He was not going, as I've heard one preacher say, kicking and screaming to the cross at Calvary. Instead, he began to pray and wrestle with God. If there's any possibility for the redemption of humanity, if it can happen in any other format other than me going to the cross, then let that be a possibility. But if it's not... If it's not, not my will, but your will be done. That can be a really difficult thing when it comes to our prayer lives, wrestling with the will of God. Many times we pray something that sounds more like, thy will be changed instead of thy will be done. It's difficult because we sort of find ourselves battling between the divine will and our human will. We know what we want. We know where we want to be in life. We know how we want things to unfold in life. But so often they do not work that way. And as we've said in other Bible studies, they do not happen on our timetable or according to our agenda. Learning to pray the will of God is one of the most difficult things for us as a people of faith. But we find that when we do lean into the will of God, even when it's challenging, that life works out so much different, so much better, and even in ways we couldn't imagine otherwise. It's so beautiful to think of Jesus praying in the garden. And one thing that I love about Jesus' prayer in the garden is something that we actually pick up over in John's gospel. For it tells us that Jesus prayed for his followers, prayed for his disciples, because he knew what they would need in order to continue the ministry of God's kingdom following his death, burial, and resurrection. 
that should give us hope as well, knowing that Jesus thought enough of his followers long ago, and that Jesus continues to think of us day by day. And as the scriptures say, he makes intercession between us and our Heavenly Father. Prayer is truly the lifeline of the faith community. It's something that we should not take for granted, and it's something that we should allow to be central to our lives if we're going to grow in Christ, if we're going to know the will of God, and if we're going to have the strength to press on in order to live out the will of God. Brothers and sisters, wherever you are in life, whatever it is that you're wrestling with, take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't be afraid that you're going to say the wrong things to God. Don't get afraid that God is going to get bored of hearing from you. Don't even hesitate to pray when you don't know exactly what to say. God hears the heart of his servants. That's what we find of Jesus in the garden. And we should learn so much about our own prayer lives to be honest with God to pray not the things that we want in life, but what God ultimately wants for our good and his glory. But then there's sometimes when we're kind of like the disciples, we fall asleep, we have good intentions, we want to pray. How many of us have fallen asleep praying at night only to wake up the next morning realizing that we never even said amen? Some people said maybe that's a good thing, though, because that means we're setting ourselves up for a peaceful night's rest. We put ourselves into the presence of God for the overnight hours. The disciples were probably filled with the food from the Passover celebration, but they were dealing with their own mental and spiritual anguish because they had heard Jesus say a lot of things in the hours leading up to this moment that were disturbing and distressing. They needed Jesus' prayer they needed to pray, and so also do we need to pray, because if we're not careful, we can be like the disciples, and we can fall into time of trial. It's not a matter of if, but when those times come. The times that follow this period of prayer were going to be very difficult for the disciples to see Jesus led away by Roman guards, to hear of his mocking and his beating, and then to see him fastened to a Roman cross. All of these things would have been weighing upon the hearts and minds of those disciples. Sometimes that's how our lives feel. It may not be for a crucifixion situation, but it may be that the time that we're feeling like things are beyond help, they're beyond hope, there's no way out of the moment that we're living in. But even then, even when you don't know how to pray, keep praying. Say, God, understand my heart. God, I don't know why this is happening or what's going on or what all of this means. I can't make sense of it. But God, you understand my heart. You know my thoughts and my feelings. God, give me what I need for the living of these days. Brothers and sisters, it's been good to spend a few moments with you discussing the prayer of Jesus as found in Luke chapter 22. Continue to be fervent in your prayer lives. Continue to seek godly wisdom and insight for each and every step of every single day of your faith journey. Would you bow with me as we close in a moment of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer of Jesus. The fact that he wrestled in the garden is an indication that there were so many things going through his heart and his mind at that particular time. But Lord, we know how the prayer concluded, not what I will, but what you will be done. May that be our longing. May that be our prayer at the end of each and every day, not our will, but your will. And Lord, give us the strength, the wisdom we need to understand your will and the ability to accept that will and to live into that will day by day. Bless my brothers and sisters, wherever they are in the journey of faith, whatever they're feeling, whatever they're facing this very day, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, as you go in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be sure to like and to share these videos on YouTube and help us to get the word out about what God has done for us as we find in the Gospel of Luke. Take care until we see each other again.